Welcome to another update video for Portal 64. Um, the biggest thing I want to show today is my work on polishing portal rendering and fixing that visual glitch that happens when you pass through portals. And while I'm at it, I figured I'd explain how it works. So how can a console 10 years older than Portal actually run it? First, I draw the level as seen through the portal only to the part of the screen where the portal is visible. Uh, this is no different than how games render split screen. It's just that the two split screens overlap. But of course, two overlapping views does create some challenges. You don't want the views leaking into each other. For example, you don't want the portal view or the view that you see through the portal. You don't want objects from that view to be showing up inside the player view and vice versa. To fix this, I make use of the Z buffer. Um, so a Z buffer is just a chunk of memory that stores how far away from the camera each pixel is. Whenever a new pixel is drawn to the screen, first the depth of that new pixel is checked against the depth of the existing pixel from the Z buffer. If the new pixel is further away, then it's just discarded. But if it's closer, then the new pixel is drawn to the screen and the depth buffer is updated with the depth of the new pixel. This prevents objects that are far away from being drawn over the top of objects that are close. So using the Z buffer, I prevent objects from the portal view from leaking into the player view simply by rendering the portal view into the second half of the Z buffer and rendering the player view into the first half. This guarantees that any pixel from the portal view will be further from the camera than any pixel from the player view. So it's impossible for the, for the portal view to leak into the player view. This unfortunately means that the portal view can't show up at all since the player view would always be rendered over the top of the portal view. But I fix this in two ways. First, I cut a hole in the wall where the portal is. I mean, this alone would be enough to solve the problem except that objects can be behind the wall, and if they are, they will still render over the top of the portal view. To deal with that problem, I simply just draw a transparent overlay over the face of the portal view before drawing anything else in the player view. This overlay is not visible, but it still updates the Z buffer. That way, after drawing this cover, anything that's behind the, por the portal will not show up because of the Z buffer, but anything in front of it will still be drawn normally as it should. With that cover in place, you can just draw the rest of the view normally and there will be no more leaks from one view into the other. You still need to cut a hole in the wall because without it there is Z fighting between the wall and the portal face, leading to this interesting effect. It makes it look like there is a Kraken trying to make its way into my game. Speaking of Krakens, my buddy over at Kraken Casting made this companion cube pendant. I think it turned out great, and if you're curious on how to do metal casting, I recommend you go check his video out. We also made a video in high school together called Not So Superman. It's on my channel. I don't recommend you check that video out. Anyway, there's still one more problem to solve, and it has to do with when the camera clips into the portal cover. All cameras have a near plane and a far plane. Anything in front of the near plane or behind the far plane are not drawn. This is what limits draw distance, but it also determines how close something you get to the camera before it disappears. This is a problem because we need the portal cover to not disappear even when clipping with the camera, otherwise objects from the player view can leak into the portal view. To solve this, I check if the portal cover is intersecting with the camera front plane. If it is, I recreate that polygon that would be cut away and draw that to the screen separately. And that just makes sure that the portal effect remains clean even as you clip through it. The end result is a portal rendering system that runs smoothly with no major visual glitches on Nintendo 64 hardware. And I couldn't be happier with the end result. I also want to give a quick update on some of my other progress in the game. Um, I implemented the Emancipation Grid, and whenever I touch the cube to it, it fizzles away. I'm really pleased with how the fizzle effect turns out. It actually makes use of the noise channel, which you may recognize from the blue cap in Mario 64, or Bongo Bongo from Ocarina of Time. I'm glad to have found a good use for the noise channel, because I really want to use the full range of the Nintendo 64's capabilities. The elevator also now works, and it can take me to the second test chamber, which is also now implemented.
Please place the weighted storage cube on the 1500 megawatt aperture science heavy duty super colliding super button. Perfect. Please move quickly to the chamber lock as the effects of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test. And that's all for now, so thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.